Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video you should be able to describe what's meant by a covalent bond. You should then be able to draw dot and cross diagrams for covalent molecules. We've already seen that ionic bonding takes place when a metal reacts with a non-metal. Ionic bonding involves the transfer of electrons from the metal atom to the non-metal atom. But what happens when a non-metal reacts with a non-metal? Well in this case covalent bonding takes place. I'm showing you here two hydrogen atoms, and remember that hydrogen is a non-metal. As you can see, both hydrogen atoms only have one electron in the 1s orbital of their outer shell. Now when these two atoms react, their 1s orbitals overlap, and the electrons are now shared between the two atoms. This shared pair of electrons forms a covalent bond, and we form the hydrogen molecule H2. Now a key idea you need to understand is that the pair of electrons is attracted to the two nuclei of the atoms forming the bond. This is called a covalent bond, and both atoms now have two electrons in their outer shell, giving them the same electron configuration as the noble gas helium. Now we can represent this covalent bond as a straight line like this, and you need to remember that this line represents a shared pair of electrons. Here are two fluorine atoms, and remember I'm only showing the outer electron shells. As you can see, fluorine atoms have seven electrons in their outer shell, and by sharing a pair of electrons to form a covalent bond, each fluorine atom now has the same electron configuration as the noble gas neon. When this takes place, we form the fluorine molecule F2. Now, if we react hydrogen with fluorine, then again a single covalent bond forms, and we've made the molecule hydrogen fluoride. Now, in all of these cases, each atom originally required one more electron, to achieve the same electron configuration as the nearest noble gas in the periodic table. And in all of these cases, each atom formed only one covalent bond. I'm showing you here two atoms of oxygen. Oxygen atoms have got six electrons in their outer shell. This means that an oxygen atom requires two more electrons to have the same electron configuration as the noble gas neon, which is the nearest noble gas to oxygen in the periodic table. So in this case, the oxygen atoms form a double covalent bond like this. In the next section, we're going to look at further examples of covalent bonding, including expansion of the octet. Okay, in the last section we saw that non-metal atoms can share electrons in order to gain the same electron structure as the nearest noble gas in the periodic table. However, you need to bear in mind that there are some exceptions. I'm showing you the element boron, which is in group 3. As you can see, boron only has three electrons in its outer energy level. Now bear in mind that each of these three electrons can go towards forming a covalent bond. So this means that boron often forms compounds with only three covalent bonds. A good example is boron trifluoride, which I'm showing you here. In this molecule, the boron atom only has six electrons in its outer shell, so it does not achieve the same electron configuration as the nearest noble gas in the periodic table. Here's phosphorus, which is in period three, group five. As you can see, phosphorus has five electrons in its outer shell. This means that by forming three covalent bonds, phosphorus will have eight electrons in its outer shell, giving it the same electron configuration as the noble gas argon. And we can see that with the compound phosphorus trichloride. In this molecule, the phosphorus atom has used three of its outer electrons to form covalent bonds. But that means that phosphorus has a pair of electrons in its outer shell, which are not used to form a covalent bond. Scientists call this a lone pair of electrons, and we'll be looking at those again in a later video. I'm showing you here another molecule containing phosphorus. This is called phosphorus pentachloride. In this case, the phosphorus atom has formed five covalent bonds, so it now has a total of ten electrons in its outer shell. Now to explain this, we need to bear in mind that phosphorus is in period three, and this means that phosphorus atoms have the 3D subshell. So because of this, phosphorus atoms can use all five of the outer electrons to form covalent bonds, meaning that the phosphorus atom ends up with ten electrons in its outer shell. Now using the D subshell in this way is called expansion of the octet, but remember that this cannot take place with elements in periods one or two, as these elements do not have a D subshell. Here's another molecule which shows expansion of the octet. This is called sulfur hexafluoride. By forming six covalent bonds to fluorine atoms, the sulfur atom has 12 electrons in its outer shell, and to do this, the sulfur atom uses its 3D subshell. In the next video, we look at dative covalent bonding. <laughs>